Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram will show you more of the stuff that you actually want to see from your target market. As if you were the target market. How weird and, you know, mind fucked is that? Ah, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Mario Ranchi, brand strategist and founder of Manufacture here today with another episode of Ambitions of an Agency. And today we're going to talk about market val oh, okay. Market validation. And market validation is one of the most important parts of building a business. I would say, you know, apart from branding, apart from marketing, market validation is key. It is the foundation of everything. Right? Coming up with an idea, great. You came up with an idea for your business or you came up with your idea with whatever, great. But have you validated it? Probably not. So market validation. Well, market validation is basically validating your product or service in the market. Validating if it actually has any use, if it is an actual service that people will pay for, and if it's a service or process or thing that people will want more and more of. If there's a high demand for it, does it actually solve a certain type of pain, right? And so that's market validation. And it's one of the best, it's the one, and it's actually going into the market, going to the people, talking to people face to face, or not face to face, you know, maybe sales calls, whatever, and really just understanding them, right? So there's three parts of market validation, and there's three things you can do when to do for validating your market if maybe you're a small business, or in any case, if you're a design business and you're trying to figure out, you know, if there's a potential market here. So, first things first. Um, I'd say start with industries that you like, right? Or, you know, whatever it is, right? Let, I'll take, let's take my case for example, right? I'm going to say, you know, I started off thinking about I can help real estate brokerages or brokers generate more leads for their business. That was the basic premise I started out with, basically. Right, so you have your idea, right? I, ba, 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 ba. Okay, I can. I want to do that. So can I? So let's go out to the market and validate it. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get on sales calls. It's first thing you're gonna do. Um, and there's many ways to do that. You go get through LinkedIn. You message a bunch of people. Um, you know, it's a numbers game, really. Uh, but be strategic about your numbers game. I always say this: be strategic about your numbers game. Never spam everybody outright. If you're going to go direct message and you direct message everyone, be very strategic about it. Know what you know why you're messaging this person and giving them a good answer or a good reason to talk with you, basically, or get on the phone with you, basically. Right. Um, so that's the first thing. So get on sales calls. When you're on sales calls, um, you have to lead the conversation down into points that talk about pain and talk about challenges and talk about. Things that are about um, their, you know, their biggest challenges. Basically, uh, the thing is, people will never outrightly tell you um, truly what their biggest challenge is, or what their biggest pain is, or what they would like to see. Right? The whole, if you know, the whole, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, was it Henry Ford? Yeah, Henry Ford. I mean, I'll put, I'll put up the the quote here or something like that. If if you have, uh, if I'd ask my customers um, how, if they like to go faster, they'd say that I'd like a faster horse or something like that. I don't know. But the main premise of that quote, really, at the end of the day, is basically that the customers didn't know what they wanted. Or they do know what they want. And they have a very particular way of telling you this. Because humans, um, we're very interesting creatures that way. We're not literal. We're not rational as we think we are. We're not as rational as we think we are. So you have to lead the conversation down into those two categories. Pains, right, and gains. Pains, meaning, you know, how, what, what are the real problems, what are the real things that really keep them up at night, and gains, what do they actually want, how do they want it solved, what, do, what, what, what would a good solution look like to them, and really go into that, right? So I have a few key questions here I write down, okay? like. You know, it's not exactly a sales script. It's more so just a few key questions I write down about exactly 
who I'm talking to and, you know, trying to, you know, really pull out the information as much as I possibly can, really. Because if I go on a sales call, obviously I wanted to convert into a client, but if I get information out of it, so be it. That's better for me because I get to do my market validation as well, right? And that's, that's also the main part of it. Um, so, yeah, so I always start off with, you know, why do you want to talk with me today or something like that, right? And they usually they can up, they go in a little bit about that if they're eager to. If not, I ask them what is their single most biggest challenge. Now you may think, Mario, that's a very literal sort of thing to say, you know, biggest challenge, right? But they will tell you. But the part in the thing is, is the power of conversation branches or tree branches or, yeah, conversation branches. Think about a conversation as it starts in the big part, like a big fucking tree, right? And you have these different branches branching off, right? And if you say something, it branches off into this. It branches off into that. It branches off into here, right? You want to lead down the conversation into the pains or the gains, either one right and these questions are to lead you down so you use a mixture of direct questions you use a you use a mixture of probing questions like tell me more um you know why do you think that is what do you mean by that right those are probing questions that allow the pr person to expand further on their statement and you want them to expand further on their statement because if they don't expand further you will get a surface level answer and you do not want a surface level answer you want something that is key and deep into a person's psyche you want to know what really keeps them up at night right and that's why I even include stuff like you know uh, and and these type of st like stuff like you know are you comfortable relying on this way moving forward right no no they're not but it's a it's an indirect question to to tell them otherwise so you use a mixture of indirect questions probing questions um, direct questions to formulate a conversation that goes in either those different branches into pains or gains. And you note down those pains or gains, right? Or you record them, whatever way you want to do, really. But, you know, you record or you, you know, you write down the pains and gains. And afterwards, in after the sales call or after the call that you've had, you you go through many of these you have to go through many you cannot rely on one piece of data so you have to take as many calls as possible you know i recommend at least in the beginning 40 or 50 at least you're like wow 40 or 50 why well because you need to get a big data sample size so you can actually understand you know if the the market is valid so you go through if there is patterns in it like you know you you label them you label them you're like oh yeah okay so they're having trouble getting listings. Oh, this one has trouble get people getting people over there to look at their properties. Oh, this one has trouble getting more clients through their pipeline. Huh, okay, so there is a problem there. And you start to see patterns in the conversations. Because at some point, the, the, it, will be re, it will be pretty pretty clear to you what the pattern is, right? Um, and another thing, when you're in the sales calls, the part when you talk about your offer is also the biggest part as well. Because the, when you talk about the offer, it will show it will show the prospects, you know, or it will you have to gauge the reaction of the prospects and the people on the phone of what, if they're reacting to your offer or not. If they're not, then you have to go back and you have to change something about that, right? And I talk about that in my other video, like you know, make the value clear. And if not, you ask them, you know, hey, what specifically would you want from me? What are you looking to do from me, right? And they they ultimately will tell you. And then again, you use that as market data, right? So those questions, pains and gains, you know, biggest challenges, you know, what are they looking specifically for? You know, what is their dream state, their desired state, their gain, right? And how do you bridge the gap? And so you use all that data. Again, be very wary, just really be objective about it all and really understand all the different details about that data you know from all the way from you know the personality to the the actual wording of it to the subtext of the wording right what does the what is it actually communicating to you for, in subtext right somebody might saying you know you know in a different type of tone of voice something else and you you have to recognize that right are they being you know sarcastic are they being you know are they being 
uh, happy about it, you know, no, yeah, we totally have a handle on this, whatever, right? Is, is their wording contradicting their tone of voice? Like, that's another thing you have to work at. So, so just gather all this data. You really need conversation, need to bring the conversation into those two areas to gather data. So then once you have all that data, you can start making all these content posts, like I said, and doing the second part. Look, second step is immerse yourself in the audience, right? Immerse yourself in the audience. Whoop. Immerse yourself in the audience. Really pull yourself into everything. Follow the different pages that you, you know, that, that are pertain to your industry. You know, like for me, it's Inman, it's, uh, it's Realtor.com, it's Property Negotiator, it's all these different ones. And then, you know, groups, you know, real estate agent networking, uh, whatever, right? All, this different, all these different groups on Facebook, on LinkedIn, join all of these groups. Be in their environment, see what they're talking about. Really be within the conversation add to the conversation when you need to. Really talk about the different things in their industry. Ask those questions, probing questions, inside the group at times when you see necessary, right? You want to, like, it, the, one, like if you don't just get calls, you actually can get on groups and actually use them to validate your, 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 your market as well. So you can have that to, to do as well. So immerse yourself in the audience, and as you immerse yourself overall, when you immerse yourself in groups, you like pages, you like all this stuff, whether through Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all this stuff. When you're immersing yourself in your audience, you are becoming, you're playing like an actor role. You are trying to become and look through their eyes, basically, right? And this is an interesting thing because how social media works is that it shows you the things that you follow. After you followed a bunch of these pages, commented on a bunch of these groups, all the stuff, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram will show you more of the stuff that you actually want to see from your target market, as if you were the target market. How weird and, you know, mind fucked is that? But it's because that's how the social media platforms are made. So you are, when you're following all these groups, they will automatically show you different stuff and the algorithm will recommend all these different stuff that is pertained to your target market. So you even have even more data to go on. You have even more people to interact with, more people to call up, right? It's amazing, that's how it works and you can really use that to your advantage, right? It's how advertisers target you on Facebook. But you can use this to your advantage because now you get to see everything your target market is seeing. You get to see the articles they're seeing. You get to see the stuff they're seeing. You get to see the comments people are making on different posts. You get to see the posts that are relevant to them. That is all that matters. You should be doing all this and you should be looking for patterns. At any time, you should be looking for patterns, tweaking a little bit, and doing all these things. So, you know, as to summarize, one, Make sure that you, you get out and you validate the market, whether through networking events, whether through sales calls, and lead them down the conversation branches using those type of questions. Second, get into groups. You utilize the Facebook, LinkedIn, or whatever algorithm to, show, to see the platform through their eyes, basically, and see all the relevant posts and all the stuff they're doing. And third, finally collate all the data and evidence and go out to the market and keep trying, right? Keep trying, you know, after you've, kind of done this for a time being, you know, you have to keep going out there on sales calls, networking events, and keep probing the market until something sticks. And the best way of knowing that you validated it is someone gives you their fucking credit card. That's really it. They give you your credit card, they give you money for the thing you is, and then you have validated your product in the market. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. This was very informative, I'm sure. And, you know, I've been wanting to do this one for a long time because it, people, they start a business, really, and they don't actually understand how to validate a market properly, especially in this day and age, because it's harder to do, I'd say, especially if you live in a country that, you know, you're, you're remote, right? You know, if you're in a remote area or you just aren't close to a big city, it can be hard. But social media allows you to do market validation, so there's no excuse. That's my video for today. Um, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you on the next one.